This reveal, I, I w I'm willing to guess that there are some people that aren't as, aren't as happy about it. I've always been fine with the idea of Noelle getting the water spirit. I, I don't think she's going to keep the water spirit, like Undin, um, unless Lolo dies. I, I don't really know if she's going to die, at least as of right now. When she was being, you know, when, when she was down with Morris and essentially was Morris having a magical Wikipedia, that, that was like a setup where, like, I could see her dying. But right now, the fact she's with Vonica and she's, she's like, curse-controlled, but I'm sure that, you know, the, the whole idea that Gordon will show up at some point and help, I, I'm very much on board with that because it would, you know, it's obviously something Gordon set off to go do is figure out, like, ways to deal with curses and whatnot. So it would be a really good way to both give him some spotlight and give him some content in this arc and also to save Lolo. And plus it'd be really cool if they save Lolo and he goes back to her and then we could have Lolo and Undine join in in the fight against the uh, against the Spade Kingdom and against the, uh, the Bullfob Devils. Because the thing that is, is very true is the next gate I don't imagine is that far off. I don't know why I said it like, this is very true, but it's like, hey, it's speculation. Anyway, you know what I mean, but we should be close enough with Morris and everything that he's doing to the point where we'll get another gate open. I'm hoping by chapter 300, maybe somewhere around that. But if we get another gate open, you know, another uh, another Supreme Devil comes out. I really, I don't know what it is about, like, the ranking called Supreme Devils. I think it's every single time I think of Taco Bell. But with like another supreme devil coming out as long as they're not goofy like lilith and nama because it's like very clear that lilith and nama were powerful but they were just so non-serious that they just were getting caught by stuff like imagine if they imagine if they didn't take Nox seriously enough to destroy his spell and they got trapped because they're like oh let's see where this goes they were just serious enough to know that they should deal with that Whereas, like, with Asta, they were, they, they didn't pick up in time. Hey, anti-magic, this guy literally just, like, first move, cut Nama's arm off. Or, I guess his hand, but you know what I mean. So, if the next Supreme Devil that comes out is at least aware of, like, hey, what happened to the last guys that were supposed to be here? Oh, they got killed? I guess I should be serious enough to understand that they have something to deal with devils. He doesn't have to be like, oh, man. He beat them so he could beat me. Because obviously, like, a strong... Like, the next tree devil will be much more powerful. But I'm hoping they're at least smart enough to know, like... Yeah, this means that they have some method of taking down devils. And though those devils aren't as powerful as me, I should be cautious. Because the devils being dumb was the thing that made me just go, uh, Why? Because they just... They, they didn't pick things up smart enough. It's not like, again, it's... It, the best example... Zagrid, Zagrid got hurt by Austin even after he healed himself. He was aware, like, yeah, that that's a power that I have to be at least somewhat cautious about. And he analyzed what was going on to the point where he was, you know, he was shown to be a tactical and intelligent fighter. So if we can get even half of that with the next Supreme Devil that comes out, they should be good. So someone like Lolo, even though she can't fight, because that was one of the things revealed in this chapter. Also, haha, -ha, people who were saying that Lolo can beat Mariliona, what's she gonna do, throw her non-attack spells at her? But, um, even though Lolo isn't a combat wizard, she is still a massively powerful support wizard. And it's not like, you don't have to be an attack person. As long as you provide, like, a necessary input to the team, you have something that you bring that is very valuable, that's, that's a plus. So, say, like, Lolo doesn't, like, say, say they get Lolo free, Unu goes back to her, they then have the same level of AoE support that the Heart Kingdom had in the Spade Kingdom. So, the, they should be able to pretty much take care of all the really tiny devils all around, all the really low-level devils running about, and then have people like, you know, Hey, Fuego, we have somebody to take care of the fodder. How about you go how about you go fight, like, the big scary people inside the castle and stuff? And then he can, you know, he can get on over there. Hopefully that happens, just because I don't dislike Lolo, but I mean, like, she... She still has value, and I would like to see that value utilized if, you know, as long as she lives and they're able to get her free. So, if, you know, if they're able to get to the point where she's going to be adding aid, and again, with her AoE and her level of support, you know, that could possibly free up a bunch of people that are outside dealing with all these low-level devils. But, 
the chapter itself was pretty good. The only thing I would say is I understand Undine's uh, logic. I understand where she was coming from because that was the big thing for me when I was like looking at like the spoiler information. It's like, why didn't she tell, you know, in Fuego? It was something that I think everybody had in their mind. But I'm guessing that if she brought it up, it would be something that uh, Lolo would be like, well, why don't you teach me this? You know, it, like it would cause uh, drama. Like there'd be some form of, of reveal that would cause like a rift or possibly some damage between the two of them. Because she's been keeping the secret her whole life. And it's something that though Lolo, though she like doesn't have any offensive spells because they bring up that she's too kind. She's, she's just too nice to, to like really fight. So... It's not like it's not like it, it would fit her to, to have the knowledge that she could do this, but she seems like she would want to, and I think that Undine didn't want to present something that would in, in Lolo's mind she would have to learn how to do and have to change who she is in order to fill the role of the Heart Queen and somebody who should be defending and helping the uh, king. Because though she can, she does her job obviously in context of the kingdom itself within the confines of the kingdom but obviously when it comes to defending at large scale in like a fight from someone like Vonica it's not something that she was really fit to do she's a, again a support person whereas like Gaja is like super attack so they have a really good synergy there as well but I think it, it just would open up a problem if she told uh like if she told Lolo I mean there's still the, like she could have figured out a way to inform you know and fuego without it like straight telling them well without without lolo finding out rather but i don't know it seems like she just really was really like very very cautious and and paranoid about this reveal getting out so i it's one of those things like i don't i don't i understand it from a personal standpoint but they're in such a problematic state right now obviously like they're they're not like, they're not at a point where it's like, oh, yeah, they're just going to come take over the kingdom or they're just kind of, like, waging war and stuff. Like, no, if, if they finish their plan, then, you know, it, it's GG's. It was shown in that um, in that battle when Vonica showed up the second time when Lola went into her whole Heart Queen Wisdom thing and went and looked at what Vonica was talking about. It means that they didn't know about the Kulfov Tree plan beforehand. So any idea of like, why don't you tell him given the stakes is slight, I'd say it's slightly alleviated a bit because they obviously didn't know about them trying to open the gate and let out Lucifero and stuff. It seems like it was more of just conquering Devil Kingdom kind of thing. And that I can kind of see as somewhat like, okay, I can, I, I can understand why it wasn't at like worldly stakes. Because if it was, if that knowledge was already given to them, like they already knew that was their plan, and she held this information purely for selfish reasons, I'd be like, uh, it's you're you're looking you're looking real bad. Because it's one of those things that I mentioned, um, similar to not the same thing, but it's like when I say the Heart Queen or not, sorry, the Heart Queen, the the Witch Queen should show up and help. And I know like the Witch Queen is obviously like she's not like on the best of terms with everybody, but it, it's one of those things where. If the Spade Kingdom wins, everybody else loses. It's it, it's just that hey, you regardless of like how you feel against us, you will be affected by this if you don't like if they win. So you better contribute. It, it, like you don't have to, but it's like afterwards, good luck on that. It would be like it would be like if there was a fire down the street and you're just like I'm not going to deal with that and then eventually the fire spread to your house and it's like man you could have you you had the full not long set knowledge to deal with this or at least contribute you just let it ha uh, let it spread and let it go on knowing how fire works and knowing when it started so uh, anyway I did like the chapter itself the the whole introduction of the saint sage or saint sage saint stage was cool um i remember in the, like the fan translation it was like sanctuary initially it was sanctum I, I didn't see stage in there at all i don't have a problem with the idea of the other stages i know like people a lot of people don't like the stages because it's outside of these two additional ones where you have arcane and saint like the other ones don't matter a whole lot because even someone like magda who was like was it like stage five he was able to figure out a way to obviously overcome the gaps and stages and stuff, but that's obviously a very 
like a very specific thing that he learned how to do, not something that was outright like abiding by stages. He pretty much found a way to say screw the stages and you know jump past them. But I, I do think it's kind of funny how only the two bonus stages are the ones that are really that valuable in this whole setup. Because even stage zero, it's like, eh, who cares? I, I personally think Tabata just should have stretched out the the stages more. Because it was like the stage zero were the Dark Disciples. Dark Disciples should have been like stage three or something. And like stage zero should have been like Wizard King level people. I, I think if Tabata was a little bit like slower when it came to the stages, they probably would have been better received. Because it's not like... I don't think anybody hates stages, but it's just one of those things that it's like, well, what, what's really the point of talking about it? it it's not a... It, it's not something that really provides a whole lot of valuable uh, input into the series. Like, outside of Arcane, like, being able to, def like, kill devils and stuff in now Saint stage, what real reason is there ever really to talk about the other stages? Because the stages otherwise are just kind of... It, it's kind of like a combination of, like, your mana potency and, like, your, your mana level, rather, and kind of, like, the rarity, almost, of your magic, to where it's, like, you get a better magic, or you have just better um, mana altogether, it, but it's not like somebody weaker than them can't beat them. Like, it's not impossible for, like, a stage 3 to beat a stage 2 or a stage 1. It would just be a difficulty thing, I would assume. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, back to the, the more of, like, the bits of the chapter itself. Obviously, we had... Noel and God just show up to fight against uh, Vonica and Lolo. They're just doing their thing. Vonica's just going about doing her her set of dialogue, being like, "Oh, you, did you get stronger? Because I'm stronger. Let's have some fun." And that's when um, obviously we get uh, Undine behind Noel. I know again. I know a lot of people weren't too keen on that. Just the the general idea of um, her having it, and I'm, I think it's mostly just because you know has it. But at the same time. I, I feel like the whole difference between them, when you look at like, oh, well, she would have ultimate magic and Yuno would have spirit magic and stuff. I highly doubt that with the whole concept of ultimate magic that Yuno will never get it. And then it would be, it'd be really weird if he eventually got it. And then like you tried to keep Noelle set on like ultimate magic is like her only other thing. So why, why would it be set to like limit her if you know that you know is going to get something you know the same thing eventually i i'm personally not against her keeping undine but the only way i would say that like i would want uh noel to keep the spirit would be if lolo dies so unless there's something to set up lolo actually dying i i don't want noel to keep it because i don't think it would make sense if lolo is uh if lolo is alive and then noel to keep the spirit it just wouldn't make sense to me because one, it, like, the only reason I would ever see it would just be to kind of to give Noelle a power-up. Because, one, Lolo has... One, she's got responsibilities to take care of the Heart Kingdom. And then, two, she also has uh, immense mana by herself. Like, she has a ton of mana to work with. It's just that she isn't a fighter. She's a support person. So, I, I don't really see what reason it would be other than to give Noelle uh, the spirit other than, you know, pretty much that. So... And plus, like, when we see the relationship between them, clearly Undine, like, raised Lolo, uh, Lolo so it, it would be very strange for her to not abandon her, but her to kind of leave her. Because regardless of, of her being a fighter, if she stays in the Heart Kingdom after this, uh, after everything's said and done, then, bam, you know, the Heart Kingdom keeps their extremely powerful protector. Uh, you know, you have... Because, like, the thing is, like, even if she's a fighter, her and Gaja are such a good combo, because you obviously have super support and then super offense. So I think that they'd be fine. Um, I mean, unless you have somebody just absurdly more powerful than them showing up, but at that point, what are you really going to do if, you know, a bigger boss character arrives other than, you know, call for aid? But, yeah, we, we got to the whole information about the Saint stage. We got the whole stuff about uh, about Lolo's past. I like her uh, kid design. I don't know what it is. Uh, she just, like, it's super basic. I think it's just because she looks, uh, she just looks so innocent. And I, I just enjoy that about, uh, about Lolo's whole setup because she just is a nice person. Uh, like, again, I can understand from Undine's perspective why she wouldn't want to present the whole idea of, of Saint Stage and stuff to Lolo. Because I think Lolo would have wanted to learn how to do it. And that would obviously, like, put her down a line of uh, almost being pressured into changing who she is. And I, I don't think that that would be a good idea it, for, uh, for from Undine's perspective. Because it would be kind of... 
it, it would be a little unfair for her, but I, you know, at the same time, you know, the, the whole setup is really unfair with what's going on with the spade. So it's, it's a complicated setup. And I do think that the fact that they didn't know about the tree beforehand, before, like, uh, Vonica showed up the second time, was actually a good move from Tabata. Because it, it completely takes away the whole setup of, of Undine looking like a complete super selfish more and just being kind of, like, a bit selfish and giving her more. Like, it, it feels way more natural selfishness rather than, like, you know, like, single-digit IQ selfishness. I, I like what Tabata did with this. I think it was better. Uh, definitely some, like, Undine of, like, you, you know, you were selfish, but at the same time, like I said, it's somewhat understandable. Uh, but then we get, like, back to the, everything's going on. Vonica's just, like, throwing her, her blood attacks all around, just doing her, uh, just doing her thing. And that's when we get Noelle going into the new form. I, I really liked how it was presented, how, um, you had, like, the, these, like, blood tendrils going at her, but the saint magic is, like, pretty much, like, eradicating the, the blood magic as it's coming in. It's funny because, um, just as, like, an extra, this is bonus content for the people that got all the way up here. As, uh, I saw somebody on Twitter, uh, trying to slander Black Clover and Fairy Tail, comparing parts between them. And I mentioned before, there are similarities between them, but I, I like how Tabata does things, uh, in his own way. It's kind of like how there's a lot, there are certain things in Shonen that are continuous. Like, there are tropes that, you know, show up in a lot of series, but they usually do it, like, a lot of these guys do it their own way. Like, tournament arcs are a perfect example. You can have a tournament arc, but, like, a lot of these series really just do it in their own style. But... I li like, the, the general differences, obviously, between, like, the, you know, the series between Fairy Tail and Black Clover. Like, they have similar vibes, but they both do their own thing. And it, it, it just was funny to me, though, because I was, like, I was thinking about this uh, before I started the, the recording. But it, it, this part did remind me a little bit of when, um, of, of when Angel, like, used Callum and shot that beam at Lucy right before she was about to cast Aronometria. And then, like, the cast pretty much stopped the attack and just kind of eradicated as it's coming. I just thought that was funny because it was right right after I was just like going over, like, yeah, this guy's a dumbass for comparing things that don't really make sense instead of like the positive things that do make sense. Um, and then I was like immediately thought of something that, you know, was somewhere not even close to the same context and not really the same thing going on. But in a way you can kind of look at it and be like, oh, I can kind of see a, a similarity, but that's pretty much it. it you essentially have to ignore all context in a lot of the scenes that guy was making and this scene to really kind of like say they're the same thing instead of just saying like oh like, cool i can see uh i can see these two similar aspects within like the large scale of all these different moving pieces that are going on right now in this uh chapter in this event but anyway like i said i actually like this chapter um a lot more after thinking about it i think it's one of those ones i didn't like it that much at first i'd say i think undine's stuff was a uh, was part of the reason, but again, I, I liked it more when I thought more about her reasoning, and obviously the official translations, I think, helped that uh, helped a lot for that. One of the reasons is always a plus of not going um, going for the fan translations right now for Black Clover. It's funny, just, I guess, bonus, bonus uh, video DLC. I just as, um, I, I just think it was funny when they, like, more, more kind of, like, consistent fan translations stopped for Black Clover when they, you know, people were turning it more for the officials, and then, like, I don't know the name of, of the one that's doing it now, but they, they like, mess up a lot of, of, like, spelling, like, for character names and spells that, you know, you could literally just look up the wikis and know, or previous chapters from official, but also a lot of, like, weird dialogue. I remember there was a part in the fan translation for this chapter where it was, like, talking about what it was called Sanctuary, but it was saying, like, it just, it defeats morale and destroys devils, and I was like, what does defeat morale mean? <laughs> like, in terms of, like, their magic. So I just, I thought that was just a, a little bit additionally funny of like, man, this is a good example of wait for the officials before doing uh, certain videos. But anyway, other than that, though, comment below. Thumbs up the video, prefer the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. But other than that, appreciate you having me subscribe. Thank you all for listening. Bye.